I'm first of all very lucky to be here at all. Um, it was a great coincidence that I happened to end up here. Um, and um, I think that it shouldn't have been a coincidence. I think that I should have been originally already planned into the program because it's been very productive. Um, for me as a lawyer, being among those who talk about the, t the technological aspects of IT, um, I have been able to first of all learn so much, but secondly, um, do a great deal for the development of the discussion on IT law uh, among this uh, group of people, but also develop my own program at the University of Tartu. So uh, it's been a very, very productive week for me. There are, there are plenty of questions. I mean, we, we know that uh, technology is part of our um, a framework of how we communicate with each other, how the world is built up, but it's only part of that mo mosaic. Um, so another part of that mosaic is uh, understanding what technology is actually doing in our lives. Like for example, when we do um, click send on our Gmail, we have to understand what's actually happening afterwards and what are the implications ethically, morally, and so on, when people collect data on the basis of that click. Um, we have to understand also uh, what happens when uh, somebody is using that data and selling it, and what are their rights, and uh, what are the implications of them abusing those rights. So there are plenty of legal questions that haven't been solved. In addition to that, um, the data is moving from one place to another in the world. People are moving um, they, when they work in startups. They, um, there are financiers in one place, there are the founders in another place, the users are in a third place, and they are not only in those other places, but they are also moving around. So what are the legal implications for that if people are working in different jurisdictions and constantly moving? Um, the lawyers have to come up with solutions for that, but there are no clear solutions, uh, and um, there's plenty to do. Well, we definitely can't, look at just looking at um, uh, the discussion that's happening here in IT law and the level of that discussion and the fact that people are technologically quite advanced, we can definitely say that the legal discussion is also quite advanced. So um, IT lawyers are of course needed in all IT companies, in the public sector which wants to be technologically advanced, um, in the world when we talk about cybersecurity, um, I mean, obviously you need a uh, legal understanding of what different agreements mean, what security implications there are, and so on. So there are, there are plenty of legal questions which have not been solved. In addition to that, there are, there are legal technologies which have been constantly advanced. So the skills are needed, um, but where do we acquire those skills? Um, first of all, lawyers can um, um, supplement their legal education by technological uh, means. So they can become technologically more informed and then apply their legal knowledge to that. But the other way is uh, educating um, the IT specialists in legal questions. So we are trying to do both. Currently we have a master's program and, and PhD program for um, lawyers uh, who also then um, supplement their legal education with technological um, education. So half of the program is composed of technical subjects like programming, cryptography and information security and the other half is um, uh, dealing with advanced legal questions in IT law. But we are also building a different track um, uh, for those who have IT background.